In this video, we will present our paper SuperVal Super Resolution Shape and Reflectance Estimation in Inverse Volume Rendering, which will be published in the conference WACV 2024. So my name is Mohamed Brahimi, and this is a joint collaboration with the Professor Bastian Goldlucke from the University of Constance, as well as Bjorn Hafner, Tarun Yenemandra, and Professor Daniel Krebers from the Technical University of Munich, as well as the Munich Center for Machine Learning. So the goal of our approach is summarized with this picture. So we assume that we are given a set of low resolution RGB images of a given object. So we assume those images to be photometric in the sense that they are captured in a dark room and the lighting, the light source is located exactly at the camera position. And the goal would be to perform inverse rendering. And from those images, we try to obtain high resolution shape diffuse and specular parameters of the material. So what we mean by high resolution is that those components could be rendered at a higher resolution than the low resolution input while containing some details that are barely visible or not visible at all in the input images. So our contributions are as follows. So we first propose an end-to-end -end inverse rendering approach for jointly estimating high quality shape and spatially varying reflectance. So we basically perform all of this with a single optimization and by initializing with a sphere in contrast to many other approaches which requires multiple stages. And second, we propose the first approach which allows to obtain super resolved shape and material estimation using an explicit parameterization of the camera degradation process as we will see later. First of all, the radiance at a pixel is obtained using volume rendering of sine distance fields. So it's given by the following equation where the weights are expressed with respect to the density of the object and L here is the radiance field. So this is exactly the same equation as used in the very popular work NERF with the fundamental difference that the density that is used to express those weights is not anymore the output of a neural network, but it's rather expressed with respect to the sign distance field values. And this key difference allows for a dramatic improvement of the geometry, which motivates our choice to build upon the framework VOLSDF whose reference is given here. However, in contrast to this framework, which consider the regions field as a neural network, we rather express this regions field using the rendering equation. So of course here we apply it to our specific setup and this has a huge benefit since it allows to disentangle the lighting parameter and the material parameter. And so here in this uh, equation we have L0 is the light intensity, C is the camera center. So this is because the light is co-located with the camera and here FR is the spatially varying BRDF which model the material of the object. And this part here, the, it's, it's the dot product between the view direction and the normal which which is uh, also called shading. And the BRDF can be itself decomposed into two parts, the diffuse part here, which is given by the diffuse albedo, and the specular part, whose expression depends on the BRDF model that is considered. And alpha here are the specular parameters. So in our case, we decided to choose a simplified version of the Disney BRDF so our architecture consists of three MLPs. So we have one MLP for the sine distance field and we have two MLPs that allows to represent the diffuse albedo. So the first one is for the diffuse albedo and the second one is for the specular parameters. So here in our case, roughness and specular albedo, but other specular models can be considered as well. Next, we need to define an image formation model. So most of the prior works consider the following image formation model which says that the brightness at a pixel P consists of the regions at the pixel footprint center. However, this ignores what happens exactly in a camera sensor. Consequently, we consider a more complex model, which allows to more faithfully represent what happens in the camera sensor. So this is modeled using the so-called point spread function. And this has a huge advantage for our scenario. It allows indeed to constrain our geometric and material parameters at a sub-pixel level. And this is exactly our goal. We want to obtain super resolved shape and material. And we don't do that by means of any heuristic, but we really do that using a more realistic model. 
And here the point spread function was shown to be properly approximated using a Gaussian. And we use Monte Carlo integration in order to approximate this convolution. So we basically consider a certain amount of random samples that are drawn from the PSF itself. And this model can be seen as a generalization of the previous simple model. Indeed, the PSF can be just considered as a Dirac distribution. And in this case, we end up with the previous model. Finally, our training objective is as follows. So we consider a data term ERGB, which allows to penalize the, the discrepancy between the input image and the rendered images. And then second, we have the aconal term, which allows to ensure that our field D is indeed a sign distance field. And finally, we consider an optional mask loss. So this is used only if the masks are available and it consists of the binary cross entropy of the mask value at the pixel P with the sum of the weights of the volume integral. And we consider two versions of our framework. So one ablation, no SR. And then finally, we consider our full framework with a Gaussian kernel for the PSF. So here for our full framework, we decided to incorporate this optional mask loss in order to reduce significantly the computational cost. And so for this reason, what we do is we use no SR to obtain the masks and to initialize the geometric and the material parameters. And in the case of no SR, since we don't consider any mask and we need to model the background in some way, we make use exactly of the same trick as in NERF++. So we consider a neural regions field specific for the background. And for our experiments, we consider two complementary scenario. The first one, we train using high resolution images and we also do inference with high resolution. And second, we train on low resolution images and we do inference on high resolution. So first, for the high resolution training, here we have some qualitative and quantitative results. Here we have the real image in the first column, then the result of iron, which is a state of the art inverse rendering framework. And we can see that our approach yields much more detailed geometry and also rendering as well. So this basically confirms that the volume rendering have a much better convergence in comparison to the surface rendering that is used here in iron. And this is also further confirmed quantitatively as can be seen here. And we have also validated our framework on non-collocated lighting. And this is further confirmed with this video. where we can see that the specularities and shadows are faithfully represented. And next, for the second scenario, we can clearly see that our framework SuperVol yields much sharper renderings in comparison to Iron and no SR. Moreover, it faithfully represents some details that are barely visible in the low resolution input images. And this next example confirm that not only the rendering have those properties, but even the geometry is also appropriately super resolved. And finally, here is an example which showcases some possibilities that are allowed by our framework. So we can basically render our reconstructed model from arbitrary viewpoint. So this one was obtained using only 36 input images and we can also relight it. So here, for example, we move the lighting from the left to the right, and we can see that the shadows and the specularities moves realistically. We can also perform some material editing by, for example, changing the diffuse albedo and keeping the specularities. And finally, we can even remove completely the specular parameters. So we have a full control over the material and even the geometry could be edited as well. And all of that is achieved while rendering it at a higher resolution than the input images and at a higher quality in comparison to the uh, relevant baseline, which do not consider any super resolution modeling. Thank you for watching.